Hello and welcome back. Today we talk risk management and why is risk management so important for investors and for traders? Because if you don't have risk management, you lose money. And rule number one in investment and in trading is don't lose money. Okay, the rest, we grow money with the existing money. But rule number one, we don't lose money. Okay. And how can you de-risk? Is there a way to keep the upside potential, the 5x, the 3x, the 10x potential, but mitigating the downside risk? So in this video, we will learn from the best, from the people who have multiple decades of publicly um, shown results, okay? Uh, and not just results, but also who lost everything and then rebuilt it publicly. So I will share with you uh, standing on the shoulders of giant Ray Dalio how uh, to create a de-risked portfolio and what exactly to do. Ray Dalio is somebody that as a child lived in a middle-class neighborhood on Long Island. He started working as soon as he could, collecting tips as a golf caddy and when he was 12. And even then he had an eye on the stock market and he collected stock tips from his golfer clients uh, along with the tips. And Dalio, he started investing in uh, in that year, and by 1975, he was ready to enter the big leagues. He launched Bridgewater Associates uh, from his two-bedroom apartment, and in the 40 years that followed, he grew his company to be the largest hedge fund in the world. Today, Bridgewater Associates manages $160 billion in assets, not million, billion in assets, and Ray Dalio has an estimated personal net worth of approximately 18.7 billion. And he says, after many mistakes, that he learned how to ensure that the downside is protected, while at the same time ensuring that the opportunity, the 5x, the 10x, is possible. He says we have to master uncorrelated assets. So find asset classes that are uncorrelated. So when the one goes down, the other one is neutral and the next one goes up. And um, by doing that, we mitigate the downside risk, but we still have the upside volatility that we want to have. He says with 15 or 20 good assets that are uncorrelated, you can dramatically reduce your risk without reducing the expected returns. And so he talks about an all-weather portfolio, build an all-weather portfolio, portfolio that can stand periods of negative GDP growth, positive GDP growth, high growth, slow growth, high inflation, low inflation, deflation. And he created his all-weather portfolio, which at that time was long-term bonds 40%, Stocks 30%, commodities 7.5%, gold 7.5%, and short-term bonds 15%. So when you have this kind of portfolio allocation, and this is what we saw in the last video, how do you create your portfolio allocation? In his time, that would be a perfect all-weather portfolio. Now, we live in times where you cannot have just one portfolio and that's it. You have to work with the cycles. But... We can learn from that, that if we can find, he says 15 to 20, but even if you can find just eight uncorrelated assets, and this is what I'm going to show you, my current eight, as an example for how you can um, pick your assets, then you are you have de-risked the downside, but you still have all the upside. So why don't I just show you my current uh, way of de-risking? Hope you can see this well. Let me move this a little bit more here. So 
I use the free trading view. I don't buy here, I just manage here. Let me show you what this means. Manage versus buy. Uh, I don't buy here for security reasons, okay? I, we can do a whole video about how you trade and invest in a secure way. Trading view is not a secure way, but it's a way where you can see everything that's happened and decide when to enter and when to exit. That's what I use TradingView for. And I use the free plan. Uh, I've never paid for it. It's a free plan and I just have a limited amount of indicators, but it's good enough. And this is how I have set it up. I have a couple different uh, indicators and I have these uncorrelated assets. So maybe I can make it bigger. And one asset class is crypto. So you can create here, you can create, wrong button, uh, by clicking plus, you can create here different asset classes, like this tech fertilizers. My asset classes are crypto, tech. These two are correlated, so <laughs> they might uncouple. So many of us have the assumption that they will uncouple right now. They are highly correlated. Only Bitcoin has some moments of uncorrelated being from the NASDAQ, but it will decouple. That's why I, um, I use them separately so far. Then we have tech. In tech, you have mega cap and, and smaller caps. We have fertilizers, digital assets. They move, of course, with Bitcoin. Uh, we have energy that's completely a standalone right now. We have commodities as a standalone. I have India because I pick sometimes geographies that are uncorrelated from the others. And then shipping. Shipping is completely doing its own thing right now. So in this case, these are my current uncorrelated baskets and this is how you can create them and track them anytime and then you know in your portfolio tracker which is your main thing this is where you have the overview of what you really own anytime okay so this is what i use uh, every day to track my whole net worth here is it we in this what if your business would run well even when you are on vacation? Discover how 1,600 business owners have regained their freedom using the Strategy Sprint's blueprints. How they enjoy living their dream and watching their business scale. Get the exact checklists they use to go from stressed to fulfilled using the Strategy Sprint's method. Order your copy of Strategy Sprint's 12 ways to accelerate growth for an agile business on Amazon today. And if you love it, leave us a review. For more information, head over to strategiesprints.com. Spreadsheet. Uh, and this is where I decide uh, when to buy, okay? And when to sell. In this case, I click change in percentage and I see, oh, crypto is doing well today tech is down. So in this case, they are slightly uncorrelated, but I wouldn't completely um, take the interpretation from here that um, crypto is already a completely decoupled market. It is just two days, so you will have to observe more than one day to see that it's really uncorrelated. Right now, today, it is. Okay. And then the digital assets, they are even uncorrelated. So most of us would think that digital assets are directly correlated to crypto, obviously. But in this case, the markets, they, they handle them as being tech stocks. So even Bitcoin miners are viewed from the market right now as tech stock and this is what you want to find out this is why we talk about an investment systems because you want to understand what the market thinks and the market never thinks reality 
Okay, there is no reality for the market. The market only overvalues assets or undervalues assets. It, it has never, uh, it's never on fair value. There are cycles where they overvalue and then there are cycles where they undervalue. So price is always either higher than value or lower than value. It's mostly not at fair value. Shipping right now is very undervalued. That's why I'm buying shipping right now. And so today I might look at this one, right? Torn PLC. And then India is very differently valued from the other countries. That's why I was buying India and I'm, I'm happy today. So commodities are interesting. Look at the cycles of commodities. Commodities will have a bull run when the Nasdaq is down. And this is one example of uncorrelated assets. And then the things that I look for, the indicators on TradingView that I look for, first, the RSI, Relative Strength Index. Now, an RSI below 30 is for me buying zone. And an RSI above 70 is for me selling zone but i would never decide to buy or sell based on just one indicator so the rsi is one indicator okay right now in this case uh, torn plc is at 50 the price is slightly down but it's at 50 so i don't buy at 50 i wait for the price to be negative the rsi to go below 30 plus the macd confirmation and then I buy. I also look at the Bollinger Band. So in this case, I have a Bollinger. Let's clean this up so that you can see it better. In this case, I have some Bollinger Bands here. This is a Bollinger Band. You see the upper band is at 1375. The lower band is at 1258. So this tells me the range of the moving average. Most things move from between the upper band and the lower band, and they swing between those. So right now it's exactly in the middle, and you see that the moving average is right here, the middle. And so you have the Bollinger Band basis, which tells you the middle, the upper band and the lower band. You want to buy around the lower band or when it breaks below, and you want to sell at the upper band, you know, it's extended, it will come back. So all things in life and in the markets, they revert back to the mean. If something is up here, it will revert back here at some point. If something is here, it will revert back here at some point. Just a question of when. These are the indicators that you might want to use. Um, and this is where it shows you the earnings, right? Earnings reports negative earning report positive earning report and it shoot it up so right now it you might not want to buy this one it's already shoot it up right you want to buy low and sell high this is one example portfolio allocation in terms of risk management how can you de-risk according to ray dalio on whose shoulders we are all standing if we find different asset classes that are uncorrelated. I look for eight, he looks for 15 to 20. Avoid trying to do thousands of things that doesn't work. We have 274 templates for your business success. Reach your ambitious goals with one-on-one -on -one sprint coach. We double your revenue in 90 days. But of course, the more you have, the more work you have during the week, during the day, on, on checking them because it's not just a set it and forget it. You have to double check that your assumptions are still correct, the fundamentals are correct, and you have to look at the technical analysis to find the right moment to enter and the right moment to exit because you can buy the best assets at the wrong time. So um, this is how you de-risk risk management so that you make sure that you don't lose money, but you still have the upside potential. Hope that helps. Let me know what you need next and keep rolling, everybody.